Hi, my name is Anna Ol, and in this video I will share with you how I dye my ponchos. One important thing I want to mention, it is not necessary to do for every poncho brand unless you have a strong reason. For example, I have a very narrow foot and a tiny standing platform, so the shoes were a little bit unstable for me. But I love the shoes, so I found a way how to use them and uh, sharing it with you so maybe for somebody who has similar problem can use this darning technique too. I'm still trying to keep them look neat and uh, accurate on stage and uh, yeah, not to make it too big. Also you can use this darning technique in case if you see your pair of shoes and the platform is a little bit rounded or maybe a little bit sequel. You can correct it very good with this darning technique. The only warning is, please, if you do so, don't go uh, and dance the show next day with this or don't go on stage because uh, it is a very different feeling of using point shoes. And uh, maybe try a couple of times in the studio, see if it works for you or not. So here we go. Let's go to the practical part. We will need to use some tools. It's a very big and thick needle so to make sure you don't break it it's quite big if you can see another thing you need to have an extra needle for um, the shoe you can buy it in the store where is um, a lot of fabrics uh, for sale so it looks like this it's quite thick i use a synthetic threads which are quite thick and of course scissors and lighter Let's start. First, I create the hole using a sewing awl. Then I put the needle through, and instead of tying a knot, I'll secure the thread by melting the end and concealing it beneath the fabric. Remember that this technique works only with 100% synthetic threads. After creating the first stitch, the next step is to make another hole right on the edge of the platform. When sewing, aim for a stitch length of approximately 1 cm. No worries, it's not gonna be visible. Now we'll repeat the stitch, ensuring that it's evenly spaced and matches the length of the previous two. It's important to pierce the platform with the sewing awl in direction towards the shoe, right at the edge of it. With this method, I continue around the entire platform of the point shoe, completing the circuit back to where I began. Most important in this row of stitching is maintaining consistent distance and length between each stitch, while ensuring the circle of stitches forms right at the edge of the platform. Now, on to the second row. I'll start by making the first puncture in the middle of the first stitch from the previous row. I'll stitch the second circle around the platform using the same technique, making a 1 cm puncture in the middle of the first row stitches, right on the edge of the platform and ensuring an equal distance between each stitch. Well. I finished covering the base. To secure it, I do not use knots, but simply thread the needle under the layers of fabric and leave the thread a good length. Do not rush to cut it, we will need it later. Now it's time for the process of creating the platform. For this, I will fold a long thread two times and put it through the needle. We've got four times folded threads with such a loop at one end, which I will use as a way to attach the threads to the previous rows. I do this in order to avoid unnecessary volume in the thread's attachment. Now I will use exactly the same stitch and thread it into each cell formed by the previous two rows. Important tips, when tightening the thread well, pay attention that sewing is flat along the point shoe and do not allow the formation of round seams.
Once I complete the circle, I fix the thread in the same way as in step 2. If the resulting volume is sufficient for your correction, proceed to step 5. For my platform I need to make another row. A little reminder that it's possible to melt only 100% synthetic threads. If there is a cotton component, you cannot do that. I'm creating the last, the fourth row of my darning. On this circle, I also stitch through the formed cells one after another. If the thread gets tangled, don't cut it and start over. It's very easy to correct mistakes in step 5. It is very important in this row that the stitches form a flat and not a round volume. Don't forget to tighten the thread well with every stitch. Finishing this circle with the cutting and melting all threads which are sticking around except the one from the step 2. Well, it's almost ready. Now is the very last step to make this sewing neat and safe for dancing. Now I extend the remaining thread from the step 2 into the needle and connect each outer cell with a thread along the point shoe. This is important for securing the sewing and making it safe and flat. It is also the moment when you can easily hide imperfections from the row 4. I tighten the thread very well every time and don't miss a single cell on rows 3 and 4 and not a single thread on rows 1 and 2. It's ready, now you can give a desired shape to the sewing, of course if it's necessary. Normally I put on the ready point shoe, uh, do some relevance at the bar on one or two legs. I always check if I feel that I need to move some rows of the sewing with an O, so that the balance is comfortable and safe. Remember, if you feel uncomfortable or have any doubts, do not try to rehearse with such darning. You can start rehearsal only if you feel 100% comfortable and if the foot is aligned correctly when standing on point, not sickle or not hanging on a big toe. If you have any questions or maybe topics you are interested in, please let me know in the comment below. I will be very happy to reply or maybe create a new video on your topic.